Electra Nachios has just found herself in a fight for her life against the deadly hunter Craven. Will she escape with her life and will her relationship with Matt stay the same? Well, let's hop into the pages of Daredevil Woman Without Fear issue number two, a tie into Devil's Reign and find out together. So then, picking up directly from where the last issue left off, Electra was staring down a very angry Craven the Hunter. Eh, technically Craven the Hunter's clone, but I digress. A very bored Craven bought a file full of Electra's darkest, most inner secrets from a very vengeful Mayor Wilson Fisk, and now he hopes to battle the former Hand Ninja, and maybe along the way find that life-or-death excitement that he's been chasing for oh so very long. Electra herself is surprisingly unmoved by all of this. She doesn't much care for Craven, doesn't really consider herself a Spider-Man type, and more importantly, she knows this entire fight is a distraction from the much bigger things happening in the Devil's Reign event, as well as Craven himself only being a puppet of Electra's old ninja Hand handler Akka, so basically she's over the whole fight before it even really starts. Craven's not stupid though, he knows there's very little actually holding Electra here and now to fight him, and because of that he threatens to reveal to Matt Murdock one of Electra's deepest, darkest, most hidden secrets. What secret is that? It, we don't know, but we do know that apparently the last time Electra and Matt hooked up after he got out of prison, she actually opened up with him and was more honest than she's ever been before. Why did she choose to do that when normally she plays things so close? to the chest, well, it seems that Electra really has grown and matured as a person during her time as a superhero, and she didn't want Matt to be used against her anymore as an Achilles heel. In fact, as we discover from a flashback, Akka is basically using the exact same play she used on Electra years ago after her own father died and she was forced to leave Matt in New York behind for a little bit. Electra abandons the fight and steals a cop cruiser, the police having come to investigate all the noise from before, and I gotta say, there's something wonderfully hilarious that always tears tickles me seeing superheroes in full costume driving regular old cars. Of course, Craven will not be denied his ultimate showdown with Electra, and as such, he has decided to kidnap Goldie, Electra, and Matt's old college friend. And I mean, come on, the second this character resurfaced last issue, he might as well have worn a giant sign that said, Kidnap me. Electra goes to investigate this guy's house, not that she has to do a lot of detective work. Craven is, after all, begging her to come and fight him. But on the way, she does end up clashing with some of Mayor Fisk's anti-superhero task force, Thunderbolts. Obviously, Electra has no problem beating these guys as they are just one giant crew of mooks when they don't have their deputized supervillains helping them out. And hey, speaking of deputized supervillains, Electra actually clues on into a pretty smart idea, and that is why would Craven choose to fight her in the middle of the city knowing full well that the Thunderbolts are hunting all costumed folks? Well, surprise, surprise, Craven not only bought Electra's own personal file, but he also bought into Mayor Mayor Fisk's new Thunderbolts program, officially making him Deputy Craven the Hunter. Meaning that as the comic comes to a close, Electra not only has to fight him, but also has to fight the entire force of Mayor Fisk and the Thunderbolts. And so that was Daredevil Woman Without Fear issue number two, everybody, and ultimately I'd be lying if I said I didn't find this issue just a little bit underwhelming. Issue one had so much great stuff to say about Electra not wanting to backslide into her old wicked ways. While this issue was primarily about Electra dealing with a fight that she wasn't exactly very interested in, and if she's not interested in it, why should I be interested in it as the reader? As well as the revelation of some mysterious dark secret that is really only a secret to me, the reader, and not the people in the book. So yeah, a little bit annoying on that front. Furthermore, despite the marketing for this tie-in building up the big showdown between Electra and Craven, Craven himself is really a pale shadow. He's only a tool of a far greater evil, and that's unfortunate. Especially because, as we've seen over in the Spider-Man book, Craven even this new clone Craven can actually end up being quite a worthy opponent on his own when written correctly. I hope this issue just kind of ends up being the awkward middle part of this story and the finale kicks hard because overall I get the feeling that this mini only exists just so Electra can be off doing something else from the main Devil's Reign story. Ultimately I end up giving this one a 6.5 out of 10. I was hoping for more honestly. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way, everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye bye